Jason Benham. My name is David. Oh no, I set off the alarm. Every day, we do CrossFit wads, and he and I compete with each other, and I usually beat him. The empty wagon always rattles the loudest. The media firestorm. So here's David and this. Jason Benham. One Twitter message. Okay. Jason, aren't you upset with HGTV? Well, there's David and Jason Benham. Jason Benham. and David Benham. Who hires these traditional I don't, don't, don't want to get into the beach. Why do your you hearts go out to them? If our faith costs us a television show, then so be it. The war on traditional values. Liberal activists demanded the network pull the plug on the show. The twins say their beliefs cost them the show. Now, a country founded on freedom of religion and freedom of speech faces fundamental questions. You guys feel as if you are willing to lose everything if you're standing up for what you believe in. You were fired for having an opinion. No, we weren't fired for having an opinion. We were fired for voicing an opinion. We let them know that we love Jesus and we love people. Jesus loves all people, but he does not love all ideas. That there is an agenda. What an agenda will do. Seeks to silence, silence the voices of men and women of faith, those that disagree with it. Go get your torches and pitchforks. HGTV is about to give a show to some Christians. There's an agenda that's out in America right now that demands silence, especially from men and women who profess Jesus Christ. But Jason, aren't you upset with HGTV? That's okay, we're not victims. We live from the inside out. We don't live from the outside in. We don't need media. We don't need other people to tell us how to live. We live from the inside out. But we remember we were 12 years old when we prayed to receive Jesus into our heart. And I can remember our dad said, guys, when you give your heart to the Lord, you've now entered the battle between good and evil. But when you make your peace with God, you declare war on the devil. The message for this critical hour is that love looks like something. Love lays its life down, whatever the cost. Love runs toward the bullets and does not run away and duck for cover. Now is the time for Christians to stand boldly for Jesus, whatever the cost. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David and Jason Benham. Thank you very much. I will assume that that applause was for me, David, the better of the twin duo here. You know, the problem today is not the presence of darkness. The problem is the absence of light. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Thank God for that young man that stood right here and exposed Planned Parenthood for what it truly is. As Edmund Burke once said, the only, thing, the only thing necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Thank God for this young man that's willing to do something and step up and take a stand. You know, I remember when Jason and I, we were little kids, we were about 12 years old, and our dad took us to a, a, an abortion clinic for the first time. And this is back in the day when the pro-choice activists would get out there and start chanting and screaming, they were throwing syringes at us and bottles of urine, and they were screaming and yelling, and Jason and I were both like, <laughs> and Dad's like, stand strong, boys, just stand strong. They're we're killing like, babies in there. No, we were like, but Dad, it's urine. I don't <laughs> want to stand here for that. Well, what was, what was really interesting is, is uh, you know, we've kind of seen an agenda jump. You see, back in the day, I remember as kids getting death threats and all of these things, as our dad was very vocal in the pro-life movement, and now that Christians being Christians and Americans standing up for the innocent and the unborn, now all of the vilification and the hatred from the pro-choice side has jumped now to this radical secular agenda that desperately seeks to remove Christian influence from America. You know, you'll find it very funny that Jason and I don't really believe I mean, we believe we have a religious liberty issue in America today, but it's much more like a Christian liberty issue that's happening in America today. I haven't seen a Muslim baker being sued yet. I haven't seen the imams and the clerics getting pressured to marry gay, a gay couple. So we've got to speak it 
like it is. And I, uh, Jason and I now, we told HGTV when they fired us, and, and by the way, we didn't suffer any persecution, just a little pressure. The persecution is what those little innocent unborn babies are going through and those overseas that are losing their heads. But the pressure will turn to persecution if we don't take a stand. And so we told HG when they fired us, you know what, we have no intention of going down silently. As a matter of fact, this agenda that bullied you into firing us that you didn't want to do, we plan on attacking it with everything that we have and encouraging others to do the same. Don't say anything yet. Don't say anything yet. So here we were, Glenn Beck asked us to come and be on his show, so we're traveling through the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. And uh, was that Trump and Jeb Bush right here? Was that what just happened? (laughs) I want to switch that around. You're a wonderful guy. You're wonderful. You're just wonderful. No, that was about his uh, wife. She's a wonderful woman. She's wonderful. So anyway, we're in the Dallas-Fort Worth airport, and and our faces were on the television. We're walking through the airport, and and we noticed people were looking at us a little bit odd. And and one man in particular waited until there was no one around us, and, and he looks over both shoulders. And he comes walking up, and he goes, hey, are you guys the Benham brothers? And we were like, yeah. And he looks over both shoulders again and says, thanks for your stand. (laughs) But we don't blame the guy. Honestly, every single one of us have to face our own fears, right? We have the wrong idea of standing today. And I want to tell you what I mean by that. You know, we hear a lot of people say, and I've even said it myself, we have to stand. Now is the time to stand. If we don't stand, we're going to lose our religious liberties. Okay, let me just reframe it just for one second. I've been trying to teach my nine-year-old son how to reframe a situation. Let's just reframe this for a second. We get to stand. There's a verse in Matthew 5 that says, Blessed are you when people persecute you and falsely say all kinds of things against you. You have an opportunity to stand. It's not, oh, well, I've got to go stand. No, like David here, he sat on the bench a lot in basketball when we played high school basketball. (laughs) That's not true. And do you know the greatest compliment he could have ever been given, other than, hey, you play like your brother, that would have been a great compliment. But As he's sitting at the end of the bench and I'm in the game, 15 seconds to go in the game, we're down by one, and the coach looks at his bench and says, David, you get in the game. That's the greatest compliment he could have ever been given. Because in that moment, and what we're experiencing right now in the culture, man, we're down by one. And we got 15 seconds to go in this game. And the coach, God Almighty, is looking at each one of you and saying, get in. You, get in. That's right. Who's willing to get in the game? I'm clapping for my brother. That was actually profound. (laughs) Okay, hold on. But we also have the wrong idea of light. See, we grew up singing the song, This Little Light of Mine. Please don't sing. I'm going to, man, I really messed that key up, didn't I? <laughs> don't let Satan it out. You guys remember that song? Okay, so we think that when we get saved, God has a little flashlight and it lights our little candle, and we're all like, oh, You don't light a candle with flashlight. I'm saved. It's a lighter. I mean, a lighter. Wow. That He's was never good. smoked before. He I know, know a few is. other words like strategery and other words like this. So you light the candle. And here you are walking around with your little candle. Well, what happens when someone blows on that candle? It goes out, right? Well, what God would have us know is that what he wants to start are embers, burning charcoals deep down inside of us. And if you've got burning embers on a fire and you take a blower to it, what's going to happen? It's going to ignite a flame, right? So when... God tapped David and I on the shoulder. We had already been in God's Word in the Scripture. Look, I brought my Bible too, okay? Okay, now, but here's here's one difference. We're going to open it. And we're going to read it. And we're going to trust it. And we're going to allow its power to defeat the, the, the lies of the devil right here on this stage. But so with that type of fire deep inside of us, God ignited something. In us, And you know what? He wants to do that inside of each one of you as well. And uh, we actually yeah. decided that we wanted to bring a few people on this stage who have had charcoals burning in them for years and years and years. And none of us knew who they were until they were put into the game. And then a fire was ignited. So can, can we bring some folks on? We want to bring some folks up. All right, you guys, come on. Come on, come up, on up here, here with here. us. You, you come this side. I got this side. Okay. All right, come on through. Come on. 
We'll explain who they are in just a minute. Come all the way over. Come on through, all Let's the way down. Sure. Good Stand job, right man. Way to go. I'll make sure everybody can see what they're right here. Beautiful. Here's your line. All right. Here's Elvin. your line, Casey. We're going to introduce these folks. Okay. okay. Now, now, wait a second. One second. Okay. Every person up here has experienced some serious persecution. David and I just experienced pressure. These folks have experienced persecution. Okay, these guys are on the front lines. Okay, what I want to do before we start talking, we need to take a photo and we need to make sure that it's a mug shot. So I want everybody in one line to turn and face David. Okay, I'm in this well, too. I'm not in the mug shot. Okay, here's there the mug shot. Go. Okay, let's get, you your, guys get your shots. There you go. Mug, mug shot. shot. Criminals. Okay. You guys there are criminals. you go. You got it. All right, so now. Well, let, let, let us introduce who is actually here on the stage. And we're going to start down here. This is Aaron and Melissa Klein. They own Sweet Cakes. <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, give it up for the Kleins. Yeah. yeah. You guys deserve it. Stay standing until we introduce the next ones. And the next couple that you have not heard much about because they just settled their case, but this is Rich and Betty Odegaard out of Iowa. They lost their wedding chapel and next week are going to be auctioning off the contents of their wedding chapel because they would not perform a gay marriage. But they're is in the America? game. They're, in, they're the game. in the game. Yeah. And next to them is the beautiful Miss Baronelle Stutzman, the florist in Washington. And then we have Sergeant Monk, who was relieved of his duties in the Air Force because of his views on homosexuality. And then next to him, we have Kelvin Cochran, who was the fire chief in Atlanta that was fired by the mayor. And, and I want to introduce our last guest. This is Casey Davis, who has not yet lost his job, but it's going to happen because he is a magistrate. A county clerk. County clerk in which county? Casey, in Kentucky? Casey County. Casey County, Kentucky, and he is not going to issue any marriage licenses to gay couples. Now, this is going to be, okay, we've got nine minutes. We want you guys to stay up here because we made a commitment. The day we got fired, Jason and I made a commitment. We said, Lord Jesus, we want to serve you whatever the cost. And we also want to be good Americans, whatever the cost. We want to stand for our religious liberties no matter what. And by God's grace, we have a, we've been given a somewhat of a small platform. So we want to use this platform to lift you guys up and to bless you and to honor you and to thank you for standing with courage. And this was all my idea, by the way. I just want you to know. I'm just kidding. Okay, we're going to speak to you, and these folks actually just get to listen to us encourage you. I'm holding in my book, in my hand, a book, a flashlight. Now, this book, this book is called Rules for Radicals. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever read this book. Saul Alinsky wrote it. But it has influenced two people and a lot more people than just that. But two individually on the back, the Chicago Sun Times says, Saul Alinsky's techniques and teaching influence generations of leaders like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. This is, now I, I just want to encourage you guys with this real quick. When you open the book, there are some dedications in this book. And listen to who this is dedicated to. The first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom, Lucifer. That is who the Rules for Radical is dedicated to. And people laugh and mock Jason and me because we say this is a spiritual battle in America today. And this needs to be fought spiritually. That's why we always lead with prayer. And I'm sure you guys have prayed an awful lot. And I know you're in the middle of some things right now. But 
I picked out let, let four me say rules. this real quick. That is the rule book for those those folks who up here experience persecution. That's the rule. Those are the rules that were followed. Now, I got another book that's the greatest selling book in the history of mankind. This book set my family free. My dad was a drunken bum and he gave his heart to Jesus. He dedicated himself to the truths in this book. And by God's grace, now we're up here on this stage telling people that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Supreme Court is not supreme. It will bow before a king and his name is Jesus and he is in this book. And every single person up here recognizes that because that's why they're here. Now you tell them some of those rules. Okay, I got four rules. Okay, I pulled out, there's several rules in here, okay? But here's one of the rules, all right? Ridicule is, most, is man's most potent weapon. There is no defense. It's irrational. It's infuriating. How many of you have come under ridicule? Yes. Are you just called, you're called bigots, haters, homophobes? Does any of you hate a homosexual? You have any hatred in your heart whatsoever, and neither do we. That is just a narrative that's been created. It's because right here, ridicule, it's the, it's the rule of the book. Ridicule them. It's infuriating because there's no defense against it. Well, you're just an idiot. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Jason's a bigger idiot than me. You don't have to tell us twice. But when you say we're haters and we're bigots and we're all of these things, this is ju- they're just playing by the rule book. Jason, what's our rule book? Do say? you know... That the way that you win a battle is to, spiritually is to take the lie and expose it for what it is and then take the truth of God's word and when the truth of God's word, the light comes in, darkness has got to flee. So you heard the rule, okay? Yeah, it's worked a little bit here in the culture, but guess what? God has an answer. Jesus says, blessed are you in Matthew 5, 11, when people insult you, when people persecute you, and they falsely say all sorts of things against you. That is the truth of God, is that now God has tapped each one of you on the shoulders and said, Kelvin, get in the game. Monk, I know all they call you is monk. Get in the game. It's time to get in the game. That's the truth of God's word. I want you guys to be encouraged with this. Now, we're not done yet. We've got three more. I've got another rule. Be encouraged. The threat is usually more terrifying than the thing itself. Come on. Jason and I, we were standing at the Kim Davis rally, and I got up and I said, you know what this radical agenda is like? The one that's going after religious liberty, specifically Christian liberty. You know what this is like? It's like shining a flashlight on a little mouse that projects a huge dinosaur-type shadow on the wall. When it's nothing but a little mouse, get the broom out and sweep it away. What's our book say? <laughs> In 1 Timothy 1.7, actually 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given you a spirit of fear. But he's given you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Look, praise God. This is truth. The stage is falling apart as we read the Bible. That's right. That's right. But this is truth. The devil is pointing at each of you. The devil is pointing at each of you with an empty gun. And all we have to do is recognize the truth of that, snatch that gun from his hand, and buggy whip him with it. That's not so difficult. They did it, and you can do and it. And all we have to do is simply stand. The scripture says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We don't struggle against individuals. We reach out to individuals with the love of God, but we resist the agendas with boldness. That is so important. We reach out with compassion, but resist with boldness. You can do both, and we must do both. Let me give you another rule. If you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. What? (laughs) You know what Hitler said? Hitler said, by clever and persevering use of propaganda... Even heaven can be represented as hell to the people, and conversely, the most wretched life as paradise. That's what Hitler said. Jason, what's our truth book is hate to those who hate the truth. This is what our Bible says. You guys like the Bible? Yeah. I told you we're going to open it. We're going to use it. We're going to destroy the works of the devil, and you will know the truth, and the truth will. <laughs> oh yeah, Grandma, you guys got this. This is Amen. awesome. All right, rule number four. This is very interesting. Pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. 
cut off support networks and isolate the target from the enemy. Look at you shaking your head. You know exactly what this feels like. Go after people and not institutions. People hurt faster than institutions. That is exactly what's happening today. You know what? It's funny because it costs me nothing to be friends with some pastors. But it will cost pastors a lot to be friends with some of us. Because when we get frozen and isolated and polarized, they cut you off from any sympathizers. The greatest, you know comp the greatest compliment that God could give you, remember, is to put you in the game. Listen to what he says here. He's saying it to the children of Israel in Joshua. He says, For the Lord has driven out great and strong nations before you. And as for you, no man has stood before you this, to this day. One more verse. One of your men puts to flight 1,000. Why? For the Lord, your God, is he who fights for you just as he promised you. Did you guys experience this? Did the Lord fight for you guys? Give me Melissa that microphone. that microphone real quick. Tell, I just want you to say this real quick. I want to hold it. Somebody came in and said, hey, I support you. And they bought some cookies from you, right? And what did they ask? Um, so they came in and they said, you know, I support you and, and we just love what you're doing. And they bought a box and I went to go. I always put my sticker on my box that said Sweet Cakes by Melissa. And they asked me, please don't put that sticker on the box. And <laughs> yeah, I, I was just absolutely blown away. I'm like, I'm thinking, well, you support me, but yet you really don't support me. Mm. And if you don't support, you are simply playing into their hand. That's what you're doing. So step up and support. Now, now let me say this. Let me ask you guys real quick, just for the, for the, for the audience here. Ogdards, were you scared? Was there a little fear? Let me stand behind you so you can answer. Was there a little oh, fear? Oh, yeah, sure. When you get death threats, hmm. it's a little scary. Did you hold on to this word? Oh, absolutely. You did. So you weren't like always so confident. You actually had some fear, but you held on to this oh, word. Oh, my. Yes. Pray in the word uh, and praying in the word. Rich, awesome. Rich, explain to them real quick. The couple that wanted to get married had been married six months before. And what happened after that? The state continued the prosecution. So the state of Iowa was culpable in, in uh, chasing a, a uh, bogus and, and uh, uh, charge against us because they knew that uh, it, it was a setup. Hmm. And we lost our businesses. The couple didn't even want to get married. I mean, they had already been married. They had already been married. Six you months. see how this is working? It doesn't matter. You just lie, you cheat, you do whatever. Hey, Baronel, had you sold flowers? to the individuals that sued you before? Yes, for 10 years. And Rob was, Rob was a really good friend. And if he walked in the door today, I would hug him and sell him 10 more. Well, mm. I love you. <laughs> You're like that is really amazing. Awesome. <laughs> that is amazing. Mm, thank you. Now, were you scared? Tell me. Were you, were you nervous whenever uh, you were asked the question of what you believed? I mean, that was just a simple softball question, right? Sure. Sure, I was scared. But you know what? Um, you know, I've, I've been overseas. I've been to Iraq. I've seen the devastation that wars cause. And you know what? Um, I, I've had my worst day. And once you've had your worst day, you know, what, what comes next, you know? And in that moment, I knew I was just like, you know, no, no service men or women should be forced into a position to make a choice between their commander and their creator. Well, it just wow. doesn't go on. That's good. Wow. Huh? Good. Yeah. Now, Kelvin, Chief Cochran, he's gone around the country speaking, and I want you to give us the five points that you say that God uses persecution for. Can you do that? Well, it's important for us as children of God to understand that if God chooses you, if he puts you in the game, then he's already prepared you for everything that you're going to face. Mm. Uh, the second one is the toughest of the five, and that is there are indeed worldly consequences for standing for biblical truth and for standing for Jesus Christ. There are significant worldly consequences. But the third one is the shouting one, in my opinion. It is that there are also kingdom consequences for standing for biblical truth and for standing for Christ. And the kingdom consequences are always greater than the worldly consequences. Boom. Amen. Boom. That's preaching. 
The fourth lesson is sufferings are always for the greater glory of God. He always gets greater glory when his children choose to stand and let him fight the battle. And the last one is that for the child of God who endures suffering, their life of blessing will go to an exponentially higher level of blessing exceeding abundantly above all they could ever ask or think. Yeah, <laughs> that's a truth bomb. Now, Casey, I asked Casey, ahead, and he told me, he said, well, I haven't been sued yet. He said, but I, 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 I stand where I believe God would stand, but... I also stand where my constitution stands. So read to them what you read me back in the green room. This is, the, uh, this is section 26 of the Bill of Rights in the state of Kentucky. And it, it simply says this, to guard against transgression of the high powers which we have delegated. We declare that everything in this Bill of Rights is accepted out of the general powers of government and shall forever remain inviolate. And all laws contrary thereto or contrary to this constitution void. Hmm. The last part of section 5 of that same Bill of Rights says that no human authority shall in any case whatever control or interfere with the rights of conscience. Wow. Well, we are done. I just want to say thank you to you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Family Research Council and Tony Perkins. God has truly blessed this organization. God has blessed this nation. And now is the time for us to stand boldly. We may lose something. We may lose a job. Thank God we're not losing our heads. We're not losing our lives. But you know what? It's worth it in the end. So we're going to stand for the Lord, whatever the cost. God bless you. Have a good night.